constantly cheated on me throughout the whole relationship. It's been 10 years. I stayed so long because I loved him and I wanted to do everything that I could to save the marriage. And now, I just couldn't stay any longer with all Reclaiming your life after an affair. Why now? What was the thing that caused you to say this is it? Author Susan Shapiro Barish tells us how to start over. The power is yours. It really is up to you. Ultimately, it's your destiny. We're talking infidelity, woman to woman. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everyone. You know, our first inclination as women when we've had cheating partners is to look at the man, what he did wrong. Well, today, it's not about him. It's about us. It's about women. We're going to take a look inside, a, a soul-searching of sorts, to see where we may have gone wrong when he cheats. Now, we're talking infidelity, woman to woman today. We're not saying he had a reason to be unfaithful, nor are we justifying his infidelity. We're just looking at us and what we can do after an affair to reclaim ourselves and begin again. Now, we have someone here with us today. Her name is Sharla. She sent us an email, and I'd like for you to come up, Sharla, to share that email with us. She sent us an email about infidelity and uh, with her husband. I've been married for 10 years, and now I'm in the process of getting a divorce. I got married very young, and there were a lot of things that I did not know. I married someone who seemed to have a sexual addiction, and he constantly cheated on me throughout the whole relationship. I stayed so long because I loved him, and I wanted to do everything that I could to save the marriage. But he refused to be true and honest with me. It's like he wanted to keep me and still do his dirty work. I could not take the defilement any longer, so I have no choice but to divorce him. I would love to be on your show and talk about my story. Well, thank you, thank you. You're here, and that's exactly what we're going to do, talk about your story. We're talking infidelity, woman to woman today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You doing okay? Yes, I'm doing good. Thank you for staying with us. We're talking today about infidelity, woman to woman. I have here with me Sharla, who sent us an email talking about uh, infidelity and in her life. And I'd like to talk about that today. You said you've been married 10 years. Yes, I've been married 10 years. And separated now for about nine months. Yes. I guess the question is, how are you? Well, I'm doing good. I'm doing a lot better than I was in the very beginning. I am. I'm doing a lot better. Yeah, so yeah. The, the process now, you, you have decided to divorce. Yes, I have. I have decided to divorce. Um, we have been married for 10 years and gotten three children out of it, and it was just so much that was just going on, you know, and I stayed, stayed with them, you know, for the kids and also because I loved them um, and just tried to do everything that I could, you know, to keep the marriage together, but I just couldn't stay any longer with all of that going on. Yeah, I have your letter here, and you... Ten years. How you, you said that he cheated the entire time throughout the relationship, which means yeah. before you were married. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, really before we were married also, I believe. Um, I know like right after, I remember right after we had gotten married, um, I used to catch him all the time. He, I knew he was talking to other females on the phone, you know, and things like that. And um, he would try to hide it. And really at that time period in my life, you know, I was very young and very gullible, you know, and just a lot of things that I didn't know about men and about men like that. And so, but as time has went on, you know, of course I've learned a lot more, been through a lot more, you know, and but I'm, I am doing a lot better than I was before. So what, what didn't you know about men, and you say like that, but first, what, what didn't you know about men before you married? Well, for one thing, um, I believe that um, when you, I believe that your childhood has a, plays a huge part in your adult life. And in my childhood, I didn't, my father pretty much rejected me. And he didn't really want to have, he didn't want to play any part as far as raising, you know, me and my brothers and everything. And that had built a lot of rejection in me. And as I, you know, got older and, you know, started having an interest in guys and things like that, um, it just, um, you know, I just kind of went for whomever was showing me that attention, 
you know, whomever showing me that attention, like, hey, I love you, I want to be with you, I want to marry you, you know, and I was looking for love, and and I just went, you know, he had his arms open, you know, wide to me, you know, was going to, saying that he was going to take care of me, and that's really what a father is supposed to do, take care of you, but I didn't have that, and at that time period in my life, I didn't know that that was what I was doing, mm -hmm. you know, that was what I was doing, but I had a lot of rejection and everything in my heart, and so I just kind of went for whomever, you know, would seem like they were showing me some type of love and affection, and um, even though he really was not a good catch. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I guess you thought so <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah, I, yeah, thought, I thought, I mean, I thought so Even through that, ago. even yeah. through that, and you saw that, you yeah. saw that then, yeah. and I think we're talking today about where we may have gone wrong, yeah. you know, uh, so you didn't know then, what do you know now about marriage? Um, well, I know that marriage is honorable, and I know that marriage is a covenant, and I know that a husband and a wife are supposed to love each other, you know, unconditionally, and so there's supposed to be trust, commitment, loyalty, and faithfulness, you know, in a relationship. And I've seen, I, I mean, I have some examples of that in my life. You know, I've, I know some people that are married and they have that faithfulness and that commitment and that loyalty. And um, I thought that was what I was going to have, but I didn't. And I had my hopes up, hoping that I would have, you know, have that even after I would find out, you know, different things that he was doing, you know, when he would try to hide. And I end up finding out, you know, of the, finding out the infidelity that he was committing. Mm -hmm. And um, so... You know, I just, you know, just kind of went along. With that. Let's talk about the infidelity because on more than one occasion, you know, throughout the oh. 10 years, you knew <laughs> that it was happening. Yeah, yeah. And how did that make you feel? Um, it really hurt real bad. It hurt really bad. I remember one time in particular, um, I was so hurt. I was in my, in my closet just laying down on the floor just praying to God. And I was just screaming. I was just screaming at the top of my lungs because I was just hurt so bad. It hurt so deep because at that time period, he was um, fooling around and messing with someone that I knew. And, um, and I think that hurt even worse, you know, that that hurt even worse. And um, it just brings, it tears down your self-esteem. And because I believe that, you know, a, a husband is supposed to be that covering you know, for the marriage, you know, for that family. And when they break that covenant, um, it opens up the door for all kinds of things and defilement and stuff to come in and, you know, and to destroy your family. And um, it, it, it brought depression at different times. And there was different times I just felt so heavy and under so much bondage that I didn't want to live anymore. And there was times that I was thinking about, actually thinking about committing suicide. And just at, at different times I did, you know. But, of course, I didn't. And I believe that one of the reasons why I didn't was because um, of my children, you know. And I, I love my children dearly. Yeah. So the, the, the question is, there was a time all through these years when, when the infidelity was happening, but there you forgave and you... Yes. Stayed in the marriage. Yes, and I was being I was being merciful, and I and I wanted to be merciful. And there were a lot of diff, a lot of times where um, I was I was planning on just leaving, and I was not going to stay for you know any reason at all. I wasn't going to stay at all. But I just went ahead and decided. I had people that were praying. They were praying for the restoration, you know, of our marriage and everything. And um, and he seemed to have a repentant heart. At least I thought that he did. But it really was not true. He would have this false humility, and um, it it lasted very short period of time, you know. And so I guess at that time period, I kind of felt like, well, since his humility kind of faded away, I kind of felt like, well, since I already said I forgave him, I might as well stay. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like how it went, you know. But but now you, you're kind of fed up. You say this is it. So oh, yeah. Let's, uh, we're going to talk about when we come back that decision to, to end it for divorce and what that means mm -hmm. for you. Okay? We'll be right back. Stay with us. We're talking infidelity, woman to woman. We'll be right back.
thank you for staying with us and uh, we're talking with Sharla about infidelity. Uh, ten years you stayed in, so why now? What was the thing that caused you to say this is it? Well, I kind of feel like um, within the past, um, he claimed within the past two, two and a half years that he was just being totally faithful with me. But I'm a praying woman and I know that God was showing me that you know he was doing wrong and then plus um, I would just feel uncomfortable doing our you know personal intimate relationship it, it just felt unclean and it didn't feel like you know a husband you know loving his wife you know um, and then also different comments that he would make about um, other women and it was more of um, as if um, this lustful attraction to other women and um, those were you know some things that some signs that I saw and that I felt but he knew that if I found out that I was going to leave so he did everything in his power to keep it hidden from me and um, some of a couple of things that had happened that really made me that catapulted me to make my decision to go ahead and leave For one thing I was praying about it a lot and uh, because I know I wanted to do everything that I could on my part to make the relationship last. And, you know, I didn't know. I was believing God that he would be delivered from all of those things, you know, from that, that lust and from all of that uncleanness and that we can just be a family. And um, I remember one time in particular, um, he had went out of town. And um, he had mentioned this young lady's name. Uh, mentioned uh, mentioned her earlier that day in a conversation and I just had this feeling that he was going to take her out of town with him um, he went out of town and um, came back home later on that night and um, he just kind of had this guilt he just had this look like I've yeah. been into something yeah but it was it was probably a a look that after 10 years you've seen before. Now some people exactly. may, be, may be sitting there thinking, why did you stay for 10 years? But you say you believe in the covenant of marriage. Yeah. The question is, you know, the, the covenant says till death do us part. You know, why is this a reason to part? Is there any room for forgiveness, for reconciliation, for, for mm -hmm. change? Well, there is room for reconciliation and change, but it takes more than just one person for the change. It takes two to make a relationship work. And I was married to, some, to someone that was uh, very deceptive and was doing his best to deceive me and was doing his best to hide everything that he was doing cause, so I wouldn't find out because he knew that if I found out that I was gone. Yes. And it just kind of, I mean, I mean, I just, and I just stayed, you know, it was just so much, you know, when you're married and you have children, um, sometimes it's not that easy just to get up and just go, you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have, you know, any personal finances of my own. You know, I was a housewife, you know, taking care of the kids. And um, the finances had begun to run out and we was really having a very hard time you know, at that time period. And I believe that was because he brought a lot of curses in our home because of what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, go ahead. You, you, you mentioned earlier that the deception from him and him always trying to convince you that everything was, was okay was kind of making you feel like you were crazy. Yes. Elaborate on that because I think a lot of people do that. He, he shields and hides himself so that you could feel like maybe you're doing, doing something wrong. You yeah. Know, and that, that person. Yeah, that was one of the things that really um, hurt me a lot also was, and I just kind of had this mind block a lot. And sometimes my memory would kind of go down um, because my, I believe that when somebody plays with your mind a lot, that, you know, that mess with you. And that was one thing that he did. And um, he did that to try to control me. And um, he, it was just like a delusion, you know. And I was, I mean, it was, just, uh, it was just rough a lot of times. It was rough a lot, heavy. So since making the decision to leave, where, where are you spiritually? Um, well, right now, um, I have, I mean, I know that we have to forgive, regardless of what anybody has done to you. And I had a lot of hurt, a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger, 
you know, I was wanting things to happen to him, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, because he had hurt me for so long, and God had been dealing with me, you know, concerning that. And it just take a process, especially when you've been through so much and, you know, been dogged out, been used and lied to so much. And um, but right now I'm I'm doing a lot better. I just feel myself getting better um, every week. Yeah. I do. I feel myself. I, I see changes in my heart, even when I see him, because I have to see him sometimes, you know, every other week or so because he has the children. Yeah. But um, I am doing a lot better. I'm in my process of I actually forgiven him by faith. I can put it to you like that. And now my feelings are about to catch up. Okay, we're going to talk more about the part you may have played in allowing him and what kind of, what are the issues that surround you as a woman so that you can reclaim yourself and move forward, you know, from here. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Stay right with us. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> for staying with us and our next guest she's the author of this book reclaiming ourselves how women dispel a legacy of bad choices welcome Susan Shapiro Barish thank you thank you I, I know you were sitting listening probably saying I hear this story over and over and over from women I do and women operate out of fear and that's what I was saying to Charlotte that she stayed in the marriage because even though she was diminished by it, she was afraid to go outside, to, to leave and to be on her own, and it is financial and the children, mm -hmm. but what women do is they pretend. Mm -hmm. They pretend that it's okay because it seems easier, and they almost sleepwalk through life. Mm -hmm. Then, finally, something triggered you to wake up, face it, maybe it was that last affair which you mm -hmm. just couldn't stand another moment of it, and you were willing to really take charge of your life and that's healthier. So those are, I, I think in your book you talk about those as being wake-up moments, you know, wake-up calls. Right. You know, well, and usually they're traumatic experiences. Yes, and I think what happened, or cumulative, as in Charlotte's case, where it just kept happening. Mm -hmm. But for women, we're taught, this is, our culture teaches us to kind of sleepwalk through life as a coping mechanism to kind of get through. And even if you see signals, like you did, yeah. that something was wrong, you kept wanting it to be better and you didn't face that you had to make the change. So we, we're talking about what we do wrong as women and so for Sharla, where did, you know, where did she go wrong? What was, what was missing there out of the 10 years? What could she have done? Not looking at the man, if we cannot look at his action, but look at, at ours so that we can heal. To think of herself first because we're raised to be good daughters good wives, good mothers, and so women don't put their own needs first. So by not paying attention to your own needs, even though you had, you know, mm -hmm. some feelings that it wasn't right, you kept thinking that you needed to be there for the children and even for him and not for yourself. So when you made the decision to leave, mm -hmm. and you had another decision you could have made, you could have said to him, really confronted him, which a lot of women can't do, and said, look, this isn't working, will you go into counseling and try that? But apparently you just hit your threshold, and that's when you started to wake up mm -hmm. and reclaim yourself, and, to, and now you're healing. Mm -hmm. You describe yourself as healing mm -hmm. from the process because you started to think about yourself. That's really hard for women to do, especially mm -hmm. when there are children and houses and just the day-to-day -day grind of it. Mm -hmm. So how, how, how does she start to move forward to reclaim herself? By t well, you've taken the risk of leaving a marriage. That's mm -hmm. a huge step forward. Now you have to really think about how you want to live the rest of your life. And it's a long life. I mean, women will live till 80, based on the latest census. So you really have to figure out what you want. You have to pay attention to your own needs. You told me that you sing. Mm -hmm. So you could maybe have a career. You, you have so many choices. Women don't understand that a suboptimal existence is not the only way to live that if you take the risk, you get the reward. So why, why, why? You know, all of the research says that yes, you know, we stay in marriages for 10 years that, that, that are not working. Why do we do it as women? We do it because we've been taught that to be a wife is so valuable. We think that the label is more valuable than, than ourselves. And you have to be brave enough to leave the marriage. The good news is that you'll probably remarry because the stats say that 75% of the divorced population does remarry. So if you're willing to 
reclaim yourself, to reinvent yourself, to take the risk, to move ahead, mm -hmm. to be bold enough to raise your children alone. You'll be a single mother for a while, really always, even if you remarry. So you're changing the status quo, but you're getting yourself back in the process. So Charlotte, you said that there were a lot of things that you didn't understand before you got married. Now that you've made the decision to move forward, you're getting better. Mm -hmm. where, where do you see yourself going? Um, well, for one thing, I um, know more about the process. I'm just saying if I ever decide to get remarried or have somebody in my life, I know more of the process and what, you know, what to go through before um, I do that. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things is getting my spirit cleaned up from all of the stuff that I have been through. And, um, and just, you know, and just raising my children and you know, and just going on with my, you know, music career and the things that I'm doing in ministry. And so I'm looking forward to a wonderful life. Yes. And of course, hopefully, you won't make the same mistake again. Because when you meet a man and he seems interesting to you, you will really listen. You will pay attention to his history. Women need to pay attention to when a man tells them about their past life, their, how they feel about their mother their sister, co-workers who are female, and of course a former girlfriend or exactly. wife. And if you listen, he'll tell you more than you need to know, and then you can evaluate, is this person right for me, based on having learned and being fully awake now, fully aware mm -hmm. of your needs. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's the improvement. Did you, did you see that in the beginning? Did, did he have a perception of who a woman, you know, who, who, who a woman is to him? Um. He basically treated women like dogs. <laughs> but he, just being, you know, just being honest about it. And uh, but that's that's something that is really important on how you see a man treat their mother. You know, I'm not saying that he didn't love his mother, but there were some things that he would say, and even some things that he would do, you know, that showed a lack of character, lack of integrity. And I didn't know that I would be treated that way. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah. Because respect is so important, and women make excuses for their partners when they're not respectful. Mm -hmm. Clearly, in your situation, yeah. your husband didn't respect you, and he yeah. didn't respect the marriage, and that's so much what you needed. Yeah. So next time, you'll really hear what this man tells you, and you'll watch closely with a new man. Yeah. And you have the advantage of knowing what you really are looking for. We're going to talk a bit more about how she's to do that now that she has three children. So it is single living for a while, but, you know, handling the relationship now with the man, what that's all about uh, when we come back. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, we're talking infidelity, woman to woman, about reclaiming ourselves. I know a lot of times when women are in marriages that aren't working, they stay for the children. Yeah. And they don't realize that having the children raised in the atmosphere that they're in is maybe worse than not. That's such what a good think? point. Women always say, well, when my youngest child is 10 or 12, then it will be okay for me to leave. But the truth is that not only is the environment unhealthy for you and your children mm -hmm. in such an unhappy situation, but you left with when your children were fairly young. Your youngest is two and a half, you yes. told me. And in a way, even though that's so difficult, you've come clean. And because you're young, you have so many options. I mean, women can reclaim themselves at any age, but I'm saying that to have the courage to have done it now when it's really frightening for women with three young children mm -hmm. makes you very brave. So what is, what, 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 uh, what's the situation now like? You're saying you, you have to see him because of the children. How, how do you handle that? Um, well, I just handle it. <laughs> <laughs> just that simple. You, you know, just I just, I mean, I just handle it. And uh, I mean, I've gotten a lot better since, you know, the months have gone along. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, you know, it was kind of rough in the beginning because there was a lot of fear there on my part that I had to really hide when I was in front of him because of a lot of the different things that he was doing to, you know, harass me that was bringing fear, you mm -hmm. know, in me whenever I would be around him. And it made it hard for me to give him the children, but I knew that, you know, I had to, 
because of the courts, of course. So there's still fear after you leave. Fear of leaving after you leave, there's still fear. Well, what I hear here, and this is very common with women, is there's also a fear of giving the children over to this man because of the lack of trust. Yes. You don't feel that you can really trust him to watch the children for the designated time. That I don't know if it's a weekend or an overnight, but a lot of women in the midst of divorce and after divorce really do have that trepidation. But what I'm also hearing is that you have less despair now. We're learning to love life, even through trials, tribulations, and strife.